In AD 306, a new Roman emperor came into power and things began to rapidly change. Constantine the Great was a capable military leader and a shrewd politician. During Constantine's reign, Christians went from being a persecuted sect to openly holding positions of influence in the courts and palaces of kings and governors. So if you're a pagan, or just somebody who's confused about religion, you've had here this clash of deities. And who's emerged on top? The Christian God. You can draw your own conclusions. Large part of the elites used to running the show automatically, then become also the local bishops, etc. You know, become Christian. It wasn't such a big leap because most of them anyway believed in one supreme divine being which had different representations. If you want to advance in the army or in the imperial civil service, there's every incentive to become a Christian because all the people at the top are Christians. So, you know, if you want to advance in the hierarchy, whether it's military, civil service, or just at court, people become Christians. It becomes very attractive because Constantine's Edict of Toleration makes it so. And so, as people from around the Roman Empire entered the Christian Church, they brought with them many of their former pagan beliefs and practices. Now that Christianity has been given the status as a full legal religion, then it becomes attractive subsequently in the next generations for a broad number of members of this upper elite. Now the percentage of Christians in this top 10, 15, 25% increases, and it increases dramatically in the top 1, 2%. That's the real change. That is when Christianity really becomes the Christianity that it is today. Because now the people who've been running the show, they are now Christian. Over time, church leaders began to embrace the regal robes and flamboyant ceremony that was part of the pagan religions. And in place of the simple commands of God, they began to teach superstitions and man-made traditions. Now, instead of the Christian church converting the heathen world, the pagans were converting the church. There's a train coming out of the first century represented by the documents we have in the New Testament that demonstrate kind of the shape of the church there going into this long dark tunnel of the second through fourth centuries. And then coming out in the fourth century of this long dark tunnel and the, the train of the church that comes out is so different than the train of the church that goes in. You say, what happened? In AD 391, by the order of Emperor Theodosius I, Christianity became the official state religion of Rome. Worship at pagan temples was outlawed, and all other religious practices ceased. You're trying to Christianize an empire. You're trying to Christianize a pagan culture. The old basilicas uh, were basically pagan temples. Put a cross over it put in paintings of biblical scenes, bibl biblical heroes and saints and martyrs. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. As millions of pagans hastily joined the church, they were naturally reluctant to dispose of their idol treasures. The Romans and the Greeks were so used to being surrounded by symbols of their deities, they began doing the same thing with Christianity. So many of these new converts just relabeled their idols with Christian names, like Paul, Mary, and Peter. A statue of Jupiter became a statue of Peter. And we know that because it has a sun disk right over its head that indicates that this is not Peter, but it's a pagan statue that's been renamed. Instead of Romulus and Ramus, hey, why not? The martyrs, the great martyrs, Cosmos and Damien, right? The representations of Isis, which is originally an Egyptian goddess but has become very Greek already, becomes essentially the representation of Mary carrying her child. You have a mother and child tradition all the way down through history. Uh, you have it in Mithraism, you have it in Babylon, you have it all the way back in Persia. It appears that Mary acquired some of the characteristics that were associated with some of these other goddesses. She wears a dark blue coat and she stands on the half moon. She is the mother of all gods. Isis carrying her son Horus. 
that is the image that gets a new name and now the name is Mary carrying the child Jesus. Or a depiction of the god Hermes is shown as Christ the Good Shepherd. <laughs> Asclepius is the iconographic model for a lot of the depictions of Jesus, yes. A young, vibrant god with curly hair down to about here and a little beard. Soon the statues of the saints and even Jesus began adorning the churches. Even though God clearly forbids this practice in the Ten Commandments, people continue to revere and to pray to these relabeled idols. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. 